Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I'm a fan of Apple products such as macOS and the iPad. In fact, my favorite computer is my iPad Pro. But, you know, I'm all about cybersecurity. And you might be wondering, well, how secure is macOS? Well, today we're going to take a look at three examples to test the security of my Mac. Uh, these are three real-life uh, examples of the type of behavior that you might see in malicious scripts. So the first one is going to be a password extractor, and what that does is it attempts to actually take out the passwords from Safari and upload them to a server in the cloud. The second thing that we're going to test is a reverse shell script. So what this will do is it will actually try to create a reverse connection from the Mac to my server so that I can control the Mac from that remote server. And then finally, we're going to take a look at an uploader. Now, this final one is meant to kind of emulate what ransomware would do, uh, specifically in that it's going to steal the files off the computer, upload them, and then write a change to a file on a disk. I'm not going to encrypt all of my files on purpose, uh, so I left out the encryption part, but if this works, that would be easy enough to add back in. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started and see how macOS fares. Alright, so this first piece of code is going to be a password extractor. Now what this does is it tries to grab my passwords out of Safari, and then uh, what you would do after that is upload it to a remote server. Uh, so we're just going to focus on getting the passwords out of Safari for now. Now, before we continue, it's very important that you understand that this is for educational purposes only. Uh, you should not be running any of this code on a computer that you own, and keep in mind that the, the difference between malware and software is intent. Uh, so what you might see me doing on my computer is fine because I own it, I have full control of it. If you do this on someone else's computer, well, that is very quickly going into illegal territory, I'm not responsible for anything you do with the examples I'm going to show you here today, and I'm not going to give you copies of the code. Now, now if you sit here and you write down all of the code that you see in this video and use it yourself, I'm not responsible for that. I'm not responsible for anything you do with these examples, and this is strictly for educational purposes only. Alright, so on the right hand side I have a terminal here in my Mac, and I'm just going to copy all of this code. We're just going to paste it in. Ah, so what happened here? We got a pop-up. Uh, so now it's asking for my password before it's going to extract the passwords from Safari. All right, that's good. So what happened here is the Mac saw that I was trying to get passwords out of Safari, and it actually stopped it and said, hold on, you've got to type in your master password. That's perfect. That's exactly what we were hoping to see. And for context, if you do something like this on Windows, it's not going to pop up asking for anything. It's just going to do it. So compared to Windows, it's already a win for the macOS side. So I'm going to hit deny on this. I don't actually want to do that. Uh, the second thing we're going to look at is this reverse shell script. So basically, this is a way that you can go in and get remote access to a Macintosh, assuming it works. Uh, so right here on the right hand side, I'm connected to my server. And we're just going to run ncat listening on port 6666. And then here on the Mac, let me just clear this. In fact, we'll make a new tab. We're just going to copy all of this code and paste it in. All right, what happens there? If we go back to the server, you will see that I now have a bash shell. And if we uh, just run if config, you will see that this is the IP address and network information of my Mac. Uh, so, so what happens there? Well, unfortunately, this is a loss for the Mac. So essentially what happened here is the Mac allowed a reverse shell connection out to that remote server. And what that means is that if someone can trick you into running this script on your Mac, uh, then in that case, they're going to control your computer under the context of your current user account. All right, so let's go ahead and quit this, and I'm just going to make it listen on a different port here. So the next thing that we're going to do, make a new tab, uh, is we're going to test the uploader. So essentially what's going on here is it's going to try to take my desktop folder, and it's going to make a zip of it, 
and then it's going to try to upload it to that remote server. Very simple. So we'll just copy this code, paste it in. What happened here? Uh, so it says uh, ZSH operation not permitted. So, so basically, in this terminal on my Mac, it didn't have access to my desktop folder. I have to deliberately give it access. Now what that means is that anybody who's running any old bit of code on your computer isn't necessarily going to be able to steal all of your folders and files unless you explicitly click a button to allow it. So that was a best case scenario for two out of three. Unfortunately, the Mac fell short as far as preventing unauthorized remote access, but when it comes to protecting you against ransomware and protecting you against info stealers, it actually did a lot better than Windows. And for context, on Windows, all of these attacks worked without a password prompt, without issue. So if you're considering the security of macOS versus Windows, I hope that this shows you that macOS is at least two-thirds of the way there. It's not perfect, so there's never going to be a perfect operating system. But I hope this shows you how some of the differences between Windows and macOS in terms of security. Now, if you're serious about your personal privacy and security, you don't want to use Windows, you don't want to use Mac OS, you need to be using Linux. Uh, but that's a subject for a different video. Anyway, thank you for joining me. My name is Patrick. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will catch you in the next one.